Advanced Apes. You are on the internet right now. And there are about 2.5 billion other humans regularly online with you. But it's strange to consider the fact that there are over 4 billion humans not connected. When will everyone be online? And how will our internet experience change? First, let's back up a little bit. The internet is a new phenomenon, first conceived of back in the 1960s by computer scientists like J.C.R. Licklider. He envisioned a network of computers he called the Galactic Network, which would allow humans to share information instantly. Such networks were actually established shortly afterwards at universities and government facilities in America and Europe. Over time, multiple networks with different functions fused, becoming the Internet. By 1995, 15 million were connected. By 2000, 350 million were connected. In 2005, over 1 billion were connected. And in the coming years, we should reach 3 billion connected users. To accommodate this massive growth, we've covered our planet in an expansive undersea cable network that is only becoming more expansive. But obviously the changes that have taken place aren't just quantitative. We all know that the internet has evolved from being passive, unorganized, and asocial into something that is now active, alerting you to things of interest, organized with search engines and wikis, and massively social, connecting you to your friends and you with the world on every web page. Hi, hello there. Remember, Google only emerged in 1998, Wikipedia in 2001, Facebook in 2004, YouTube in 2005, and Twitter in 2006. A world without these services now seems like ancient history, and they are more than just fantastic communication devices that give you access to all world knowledge. They are also memory enhancers. Imagine if we could read Leonardo da Vinci's blog, Charles Darwin's Facebook timeline, or Albert Einstein's Twitter feed. For the rest of your life, you will be able to curate and preserve your stream of thought on these mediums. If you operate a blog, you now have detailed storage of your state of mind that you can keep forever and easily share with the rest of the world. Our ancestors didn't have such a remarkable luxury. These platforms allow us to build collections of communities, but we are also joining these communities on new collections of technologies. First the PC, then the laptop, then the smartphone and tablet, soon smart watches and glasses and clothing. Wearable computing is already here. And they aren't just helping people in the developed world. They are driving faster internet connection growth in the developing world. Over the past decade, the absolute number of users in Africa is up 33%, and up 17% in South America and Asia. Nomadic computing, something that was impossible 10 or 15 years ago, is now becoming ubiquitous. Google Loon is a project that is trying to accelerate this process by building a network in the sky to bring the internet to everyone. The balloons located 20 kilometers above Earth in the stratosphere will communicate with antennas throughout the rural and underdeveloped world, hopefully bringing all humans high-speed internet access. A complete decentralization of access is in the process of occurring right now. As a result, learning and teaching, buying and selling, building and maintaining social relationships are all becoming truly global in scope. And the Internet of Things might be next, a world where all physical objects are seamlessly integrated into the Internet. Our vehicles, our homes, and all of our things, equipped with simple wireless sensors and infused with microscopic computers. This would result in a world with 50 to 100 trillion objects online, which is the goal of Helen Deuce, director of the RFID Center at Cambridge. We would be living in a planetary environment sensitive and responsive to our presence, something computer scientists are starting to call ambient intelligence. If Mike from Idea Channel isn't already right in declaring the offline-online distinction meaningless, an Internet of Things world would definitely eradicate this distinction. You wouldn't need to go online. Online would be everywhere and everything, and it would be the medium within which all human communication took place, all seven or eight billion of us, all the time. This medium may also include artificial intelligence, Think Watson-like AI embedded into the Internet's architecture. Tommy, I help you. 
A Google search in 2030 will likely include a natural language conversation with an AI, so it will be a much more personal and intimate experience where you can get answers to questions that can be logically deduced from algorithms sifting through all the information. Several research groups are also working on full immersion virtual reality that can become integrated into the internet. Mm bringing social media, websites, and discussion platforms new reach and further blur the lines between real reality and virtual reality. The future of the internet may also be otherworldly. Computer scientists like Vince Cerf have set their sights on the establishment of an interplanetary internet, where the Earth would become a central node in an interplanetary backbone. Construction of such a communication system would be the logical first step towards the successful establishment of a Martian colony. But whatever the internet's future, one thing is certain. Our generation is the first to directly experience exponential change. This change will be the major theme of our lives. Networked computers undoubtedly drive this change, so I think it is important to contextualize our experience with the internet and understand its likely future trajectory. But what do you think? How is the internet changing? And how will it shape our lives in the future? Discuss this with me below or on the discussion community on Hubski. And as always, thanks for watching. Advanced Apes.